Welcome to part two of this 3ds Max to Unreal Engine tutorial. In this video, uh, we're going to actually optimize some of the geometry that we have in our 3ds Max file and then re-import it back into Unreal uh, and then clean up our lighting and go from there. So um, we saw that there was a lot of redundant faces and a lot of Z fighting. Let's take a look at um, this pillar, for example. When we build our lighting, Unreal is throwing photons and throwing all of the light information and building shadows on every face of every single object. So when we have this pillar, it's building lights and shadows for all of the faces of it, not just the exterior ones that are in direct contact with the photons. So as a result of that, this, this actually has um, much less detail in the shadows uh, than we would otherwise want. So we need to actually remove all of those other faces, and get rid of those. Oh, let's get rid of those. Uh, let's see, have all those. I'm deselecting the exterior faces and delete. And then I'm gonna weld all of these points together so we just have uh, a, a better shaped cube here. Now, in, in a better version of this project file, I went ahead and did this for all of the pillars in the project so that they're uh, much smoother. And this will give us better lighting along the corners uh, and better lighting on the ground and along the ceiling as well. So we won't have any bleed, any overlap, anything like that. So next, let's look at um, this whole object. We noticed in Unreal that this is a single mass. Um, that's not good. When we uh, build our lights for this object, it's it's building all of that on a certain scale uh, light map. And that is accounting for every single face of this object, not just the things that are important to us. So in an improved version of this, we could, uh, for example, take this face and then uh, detach it and make it its own wall. And then what I, what I always do is I take uh, the corners and I move them so they're exactly touching. And you'd want to use the snap tool for this and make sure it's actually locked in place. And if, if you do that, you'll avoid light leaking and any like shadows or lights that go over the sides uh, that sometimes you see in, um, in some lower resolution light builds. So uh, I went and I did that for each wall. Um, and then these stools, these really stood out to me in our Unreal file. Um, these have, uh, go to a unlit view. These are several objects. These cylinders for the legs look kind of funky. And then this top, uh, maybe it's an artistic decision, but that doesn't look comfortable to me. <laughs> um, and it has these funky UVs for the stretching. Uh, that's probably a result of some artifacting from the modeling process itself. So I went ahead and I remodeled these stools. Um, so this is a rounded top and then some legs with um, more detail along the bottoms. Now to optimize geometry, I always like to um, make the floor a bit more optimized as well. Right now this is a cube and it has the bottom and sides. And then also this um, side here actually extends far beyond the wall. So if we were to import this and build our lighting, um, we'd have a lot of like incorrect shadows and some bleeds over here. So um, I will uh, delete this object entirely and then just recreate it with a plane. So in the version of the project that I made, I actually uh, split this object along here, just thinking that maybe the artist would want like maybe a different material here and different material for this back hallway. And I cleaned that up a little bit, added another floor over here. And I did the same thing for the ceiling as well, instead of that being one giant um, cube like we see here, that's now just a plane facing downwards. So now that that's all good to go, uh, I'm gonna select all of my geometry, just my geometry. And I'm going to use this script called Steamroller. Uh, this came out a few years ago. I'm not sure if it still exists, if it's available for 2020 either. But um, what this does is this applies the unwrap UVW modifier and flattens all of the normals, excuse me, all of the uh, UV maps 
for every object that we have selected. So I do not want to normalize, I do not want to rotate, um, and let's unwrap and see what happens. So this is all unwrapped now, and this modifier has applied to all of the geometry. Next, I want to add this map scalar modifier uh, object space, and this actually uh, scales all of the UVs for the first channel to be uh, the same scale, so that we'll be able to avoid some of that stretching issue that we had previously. Save everything, and then we'll re-export our datasmith file. Overwrite the datasmith file we had previously, and then back in Unreal, go to the datasmith file and re-import. We have all the same options we had previously. Uh, we do not want to respawn deleted actors, which would bring those lights back in. And here we are. Immediately before compiles, uh, before the shaders are compiled, we can see that um, we've addressed the stretching issue. Um, if I actually go to the starter content and add like this brick material, we can see that it'll apply uniformly to all of the geometry that we had in our scene. So there's that issue fixed. At this point, uh, I'm just going to do a quick light build, make sure this is set to preview. Uh, and before even doing that, I need to add a light mass importance volume. And what this does is it tells Unreal that when we do build our lights, this is the area that is most important to us. Uh, on a more technical note, what it does is it takes every photon of all of the lights that we are uh, setting in our scene, and it tells them that in this volume, bounce those photons for the maximum amount that we have set in our world settings and everything outside in here uh, will only get one bounce. So um, that's all set up now and now that we look at it, uh, all of these lights that we had here, uh, they've actually reverted back to the uh, default setting from Datasmith. I'm not sure if this is an issue with 3DS or Unreal or if this is addressed in later versions of Unreal after 4.24, but we need to go in here and then reset these down from 750 back to the settings we had previously. You'll notice too that the attenuation radius and temperature, that's still the same as it was before, uh, although the color has reverted back too. Um, There we go, so that's all set. And since these were the rectangular lights we used instead, uh, these are all correct. Let's set them to static. And it looks like Unreal actually brought in these lights that we did not want to bring back. So I need to delete these again. Hopefully they fix that issue in one of the next updates. And let's do a quick preview light build. Make sure lighting quality is preview and build. So this light build only took me a few minutes, uh, might take longer depending on how many lights you have and the light map resolutions that you have on your scene. Um, we'll notice that we have a couple errors, it looks like we have some overlapping UVs, but uh, I don't think that's going to be much of an issue, so I'll just ignore it for now. Um, and it looks like we have a bit, um, <laughs> we have some better lighting, but we have some issues to resolve. Uh, I always go to lighting only view to check these out. I'm going to also increase the um, exposure just so we can diagnose these issues. For one, it's too dark, so we need to brighten up all of the lights that we have in the scene. Uh, and then we have some uh, unclear lighting and shadows up here. Um, we have some chunky shadows over here. This is all a result of low light map resolution. So if we open the cylinder again for this object, go to the light map. When we generated this uh, with Datasmith, it, it gave this a 64 light map resolution. What that means is it's 64 across, 64 up, and when it builds lighting, it's basing the uh, amount of detail of all of the shadows on this object based on this number here. Now if we go to our optimization view modes and look at light map density, we can see this a little bit better here. So our light maps that are very dense are red, and the ones that are uh, not dense at all, these are dark blue. Now, uh, some people say that best practices, you want everything to be red because it looks perfect and really great shadows and everything. Some people say, no, you want it to be green because it's, I don't know, better or something. Um, 
they're all wrong. <laughs> uh, you want a good mix of the two, and there's a lot of variables to account for. Um, if you have dynamic lights, if um, the shadows just look bad, if you're covering things with materials that you don't really notice. Uh, but keep in mind that when you have large light maps, uh, that's going to take up more space and will take much, much longer to build your lights going forward. So. Bear that in mind, but I know that these walls, I need to be higher resolution, the ceiling. Um, actually, I didn't even break this object up, so that's why it looks like there's a zero detail over here. Um, but let's, let's use this wall as an example. Uh, this came in with 64 resolution. And again, some people might say uh, that, that um, they, they have their best practices Maybe it works for them, but I can tell you definitively that you want this to be power of two, um, although you can scrub the value to change the size of your resolution. Now, why do you want it to be power of two? Um, very briefly, uh, getting kind of technical here, if you go to our world settings and look at the light mass settings, we can find where the light maps are stored. And here, these are the light maps for every single object with all of the resolutions in our scene and their corresponding lights and shadows. These are all stacked together um, as squares. If we do not make this a square, then um, we'll, we'll have some stacking issues and it will not uh, stack as cleanly in those large light maps. It's perhaps negligible, but best practices, um, you should keep that power of two. So I'm gonna make this, um, let's see, uh, 1024 might be good. Uh, you probably never want to go higher than that. Um, let's do 1024 for the floor as well. And this looked pretty bad. We could make that 256. Um, ceiling, I'd make that 1024 and so on. Maybe these pillars, uh, once they're separated, they could be 128, 256, something like that. These are these are fine. It's, it's 64, although it is red. Um, these cushions, they, they looked okay. Um, well, actually, they don't. <laughs> uh, so you could increase those and so on. Um, that, that'll address a lot of those shadows. Uh, the, um, any leaking that you have around the edges, that'll go away. And let's do a uh, quick production build um, and see how that looks different. Now this light build took much longer because we are on production and we have some much higher resolutions. So let's take a look at what we got now. Um, I forgot to increase the um, intensity of these lights, so we still have some of this spotting up here. Uh, this is actually the points where the photons are bouncing, I believe. But we can see where the light is here. Um, it's much smoother, um, much cleaner along the edges. Um, this is much better over here. It's much less chunky. This would honestly even be okay if we added a material to it um, instead of this black. Maybe let's make it um, like a wood. Yeah, it looks looks good. Looks much better. Uh, the floor, similarly, we get much more detail in those shadows as well. Now I'm going to jump to this improved version of the file that I made. And this is where I spent more time um, just cleaning up these light maps uh, and just kind of isolating some of these objects that we um, wanted to detail. So uh, you can see if we go to our lighting only view, we have some really crisp shadows. Uh, this resolution here is only 512. This wall is all the way down, that's 512. Um, these lights, I, I don't really <laughs> like them that much. They should be inside some sort of like cove, I would assume, or maybe they're like uh, along the edges over here. So. I guess I could add like some sort of object that houses those. Um, I, I just made these beams instead of rectangles, but um, I could address that as well. But uh, all the lighting looks good. And then once we add just like a white wall material, it really starts to brighten up as well. And here also you can see the improved stool that I made. Uh, this has the rounded top and then some bevels along the corners and then some detail on the feet. Uh, I forgot to add material channels for it, but you could um, even bring that to substance and, and really optimize some of these objects. I actually merged um, these three objects in our previous file. This cube, this cube, and then these cove lights are completely separate. Instead of that, I merged them and then uh, flattened all of the faces so that we get even better lighting and we get some nice 
cove shadows here, nice contact shadows everywhere, much smoother, much cleaner light. So that's a lot of the common issues that you'll see in some of these projects. We could take this further, um, take some of these pieces into substance, improve these couches, um, add some decals and, and better lighting. Um, we could get into like some advanced material generation. Uh, let me know what you would like to see, or even better, if you yourself have a file in 3DS or even Revit that you would like me to uh, demonstrate with, I would love to use that as an example. Uh, and also provide like some of your artistic vision or any reference photos that you would like me to emulate. Um, right now, I'm, I'm just using this free file that everyone has access to, um, but something with real world um, scale or context may be extremely helpful as well. So I hope this helps you out. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below, and I will see you in the next video.